Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. Today I'm revisiting the Native Instruments Complete Audio 6 and looking into the issues I had with the DC coupled outputs. Now the Complete Audio 6 is this fabulous audio interface here that I did a big video on talking all about the way that it can control your modular synthesizer using the outputs because the outputs are DC coupled. DC coupled means that it will pass control voltage and you can use software like uh, Ableton Live with the CV tools, Bitwig, Reactor, other bits and pieces to generate control voltage, sending out of these outputs and control your modular. It's fantastic. It's really an awesome thing. And the thing about the Complete Audio 6 is that it's the cheapest audio interface that will actually do it. And it's a regular, you know, normal audio interface of normal inputs and outputs and microphones and metering on the top and a nice big fat knob, but it also can send out control voltage, which is very, very useful. However, I ran into two problems. I ran into a problem with the voltage because the Complete Audio 6 is USB powered and so can only generate plus and minus two volts as opposed to the plus and minus five volts that we like to have in Eurorack. And the other problem I ran into was a problem with the cabling. How to use outputs three and four, which are balanced and therefore TRS in the back. How to use those with Eurorack because it seemed to be not doing it right. So after finishing that video, I got stuck into a little bit more research and had lots of contributions from people's comments on the video and I found a way to solve these issues. And that's what I'm gonna to present to you now. Let's start off with the cabling issue because this is something that affects far more than just the complete Audio 6. As far as I can make out, every audio interface that has DC coupled outputs suffers from this problem. And that is that the outputs are, are balanced, which means they are TRS, tip ring sleeve outputs. And when you try to use a regular patch cable, like this one, like I've been using on outputs one and two, you've just got tip and sleeve tip and sleeve, regular patch cable. See, that's a regular, regular patch cable with an adapter on. And that works out of outputs one and two because it has more than just TRS inside. It's balanced and unbalanced. Whereas in outputs three and four and on the outputs of most audio interfaces, it is TRS. So that requires three connections like that. Tip, ring and sleeve. Now, when I was testing this out originally, I used lots of different combinations of cables to try to work out what on earth was going on. And I couldn't successfully get it to work, but then I probably didn't have the right cables wired in the right way, because that's important. With my standard patch cable, the solution I did come up with was to plug in it in sort of halfway. Let me show you what I mean. So on here, this is my standard patch cable. I'll plug it into output three on the back, like so and plug it into my scope. Now in Bitwig 3 over here, I have created an LFO, which is going out through the wonderful polygrid thing, which we'll have a look at in a bit more detail another time, and perhaps a little bit at the end of this video. And this is kicking out an LFO. So the LFO is traveling out of output three. That's what I set it to, the DC coupled output, so that it's not being filtered out. It's just sending control voltage, and this is going into my scope. And what we get, is this kind of half wave rectified sine wave. So it's sending us a sine wave LFO and I'm only getting half of the deal. And that's because of the TRS output on the audio interface is not connecting up with the standard mono patch cable that's gone in there. Now the solution that I found was that if I pull this out a little bit, oh, like that, I now get, as you can see, the full wave, I get the whole thing. Plug it back in, I get half the wave, plug it out a little bit, and I get the full thing. What's going on there? Well, the cable is just shorting out between the tip and the ring, and so I'm getting both things. But I also discovered that that waveform, although it's fine and now usable, is also phase inverted, which is not ideal. And this poking out of here, this is not ideal either because it could easily come free and 
mess you about. So it's not a reliable, successful solution. But I have an answer. After dipping into lots of forums and bits and pieces, I discovered that expert sleepers have a lot to say on this because they produce some plugins called Silent Way, which generate CV as plugins within your door. And so this is something they've come up against time and time again. People are always asking, well, this is supposed to be DC coupled, then how can I not get the voltage out of the back? It's supposed to work. And I also found that a lot of people don't really know. For instance, Presonus, their tech support didn't really seem to know the answer. And I've also been talking to Native Instruments about their Complete Audio 6, and they don't really have a solid answer either. But with enough digging, I came across uh, two important solutions. The first solution is to use an insert cable. An insert cable, this is a cable that you'd use for inserting effects onto channels on a mixer, for instance. The insert goes in, the signal goes out, comes back in again on that one. That goes through your compressor or your audio effect or whatever, and that inserts it back into the mixer. So that would work. The only problem with that is how do you plug this into your Eurorack? You need to have some kind of you know, female adapter or, or something else, and they're a bit chunky and they're gonna be hanging about in your, in your rack, not working very well. And the other thing that you get is you get two signals. You get both full signals, but one is inverted. And that could be useful. That could be a useful thing to have. So you get sort of a duplicate CV signal out. It's like having a malt or an inverted malt. So, you know, that has some something going on. But as I say, you need to get the right adapters for this. And surely it's going to be better to have a properly made up cable. And as luck would have it, expert sleepers have made a properly made up cable. It's very simple. It just gives you TRS at one end, TS mini jack on the other. Let me show you that here so you can see it. I mean that's that's it. I mean it's called a floating ring cable. I mean presumably that's to do with how it's wired inside. It's not just a stereo jack to mono jack cable. It is something a little bit different in order to get this to function correctly. And then all you do, plug this in the back, all the way in, plug this back into our scope, and there we get a full sine wave, our full LFO signal coming through that's not phase inverted, it's the right way up, it's the right way around, and it's working. So that is brilliant. So that's the answer. Cables don't cost very much. You can get them from Thonk. I'm sure you could wire up your own ones and that information is probably available on the Expert Sleepers website. But that is the solution. If you have, I don't know, a Persona Studio 68C or something like that and you're struggling to get CV out of the back, you need to have the proper cables. It can't just be a stereo to mono cable. It has to be something kind of designed for the purpose or use an insert cable and then deal with some adapters to get that round the right way. Otherwise, this simple cable, that'll do it. The other problem the Complete Audio 6 had was its two volt range. It's not a massive problem. Well, I don't know, it depends on what you do. I mean, so often that I am attenuating LFOs to get to a smaller range, that actually a plus and minus two voltage range is enough. It's gonna give you four octaves of sequencing, which is probably enough. And as I say, a, a relatively okay range of modulation sweeps. But why can't we have the whole lot? Why can't we have the whole five? Now, it didn't really occur to me that you could expand a CV signal. I kind of assumed that that would result in some kind of exponential change to the way that it relates to, to other things and that your pitch is not gonna quite work and that kind of thing. Nonsense, just nonsense. All you gotta do is amplify it and then you can get or take advantage of a much greater range of voltage. If that's what you want, and that's very cool, and I'm gonna show you two ways, two ways of doing it. Actually, all we're trying to do is amplify the control voltage, and you can do that with something that you probably already have. You probably already have a maths. So let's use that. And the other thing we can use is actually a proper amplifier. Let me bring you in and show you. So we're going to take our output from Bitwig, which is giving us our wave, and we've got there our two volts. We can see our two volts. Beautiful. Now, what maths has, it has two channels of 
um, CV generation, channels two and three here in the middle. So if we plug that into channel two and then take the output channel two into our scope, I can happily dial in an extra volt. So look at that, that's now three volts. Nice. Now it has two channels of this, the maths. So I can take the output of two, plug it into three, plug the output of three into my scope, turn that up. And look at that, I've got, well, it looks, it looks a lot like five volts. <laughs> Well, it actually looks a lot like five volts, but you know, I've boosted the signal. So I can now use that through maths to control the complete range of whatever I like. So that's number one. Second one you can use is to do it properly with this. This is the A1833 amplifier from Dopefer. They always produce useful modules every time. What you do, stick it in the input, take the output, bang, there you go, <laughs> five volts. No bother, got it set to four and somewhere in the middle, I can push it further than that, you know, if you need to go further for whatever reason, uh, or you can make it slightly less crazy, like that, up to four volts. It's a very useful thing. What a useful thing. So there you go. That's how you sort out the Complete Audio 6's Mark II DC coupled output issues. Now with the amplifier thing, I kind of thought it was two channels and you could use them independently. It doesn't appear that I can, but that may require me just looking into it a little bit deeper. Otherwise you've got to buy one, I suppose, for each of your outputs if you want to get that full range. That's a still a little bit annoying but they are only 40 quid so getting at least one so that you have a full range on one of your outputs that's that's not a big thing that's a, not a major thing otherwise as i say you can use other things like maths to create more voltage and to expand that a bit more so you have options that's the point you have options but largely generally speaking as far as i can see plus and minus two volts is probably going to be enough except for the odd thing which I've got my amplifier for. Awesome. And so now with my cables and with my amplifier, I have got four control voltage outputs from the Complete Audio 6 Mark II, which is brilliant. So let me plug those into my little synth voice and bring you in a bit closer to show you how Bitwig 3 and their polygrid deals with all this sort of stuff. It's fascinating. And that was completely brilliant. What I'll do, I'll make another video. You go and watch the other video of Bitwig working with the synth boys using all four outputs because it's quite interesting. So go and check that out. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes.